Hello everyone, it's George and welcome back to Call of Dragons. As dedicated free to play player who played this game for more than 500 days, I'm excited to share some insider tips and tricks with you. Stick around and let's dive in. Today I'm going to answer the one of the most uh, frequent questions which I have been asked in the Discord or in comment sections for a free to play player like me or a low spender, which are the events. Now, uh, where you want to spend gems and which has a good value, right? Because there is a lot of events uh, like Riches of the Forest, Forge of Light, the Artifact event, Compendium 1, right? Lucky Spin. So, there is a many different uh, events where you can actually spend your gems. And, of course, in order for you to progress through the gameplay of Call of Dragons, you need to be able to utilize the most important currency, which is gems, right? So, of course, there is a couple of viable and good uh, systematic like events for free-to-play players and low spenders. And there are some events where you, if, if you are just a free-to-play player or even low spender, you won't gonna have a chance to succeed, which means you might not even get a legendary artifact, you might not get a hero, because generally you have to spend a lot of gems in those uh, events, right? Uh, so this video will be about the events which you should try your luck uh, as a free-to-play or even low spender and also the events which you should not try and that's the events for pay to win players so both sides of the players should be interested in this kind of video right so first of all for a free-to-play players and the low spenders there is one uh, important artifact event like we have for um, Forge of Light, Light for Riches of the Forest and Artifact Compendium. And in my opinion, the best one where you should try your luck is, of course, Artifact Compendium, right? Before the season ends, a couple of days before, uh, you will have a chance to uh, spin, the like open the Artifact Compendium, depending how well your season played, like... If you took the magma at the end of the season, at the end of the KVK, you will be able to get Conqueror Compendium. Uh, if you took the Dragon, which is the hardest uh, behemoth, you will be able to get Anointed um, Artifact Compendium. And if you could not get the magma at least, then you are getting Enduring uh, Artifact Compendium, right? Why this is important and why this is the best artifact event for a free-to-play and low spenders? Uh, pretty easy to understand um you will like you, you will need 30k gems uh 50k gems per artifact which means in this event you will be able to get guaranteed two legendary artifacts and trust me for a 30k gems guaranteed two legendary artifacts is amazing right uh, simply because uh, you won't gonna tell me the better value in terms of artifacts than this event like uh, Forge of Light, you will have to have at least 90k or something, right? Like minimum. If you are having a bad luck, which might happen, right? Riches of the Forest also needs to have a lot of gems, more, much more than 30k. So, in my opinion, for a low spenders, for a free-to-play players, where you can actually gather gems and sell resources from the bazaar, I think these compendium artifact events are the best one to try your luck, right? In terms of like general uh, like uh, items like artifacts inside, of course, like there is a difference between them, right? Anointed artifact compendium is good because generally in this side you are having the newest artifacts. For example, the newest artifact is the Shield of the Stutterness and uh, Wolf Hole Horde, right? The newest ones. And generally, of course, there is a couple of bad ones which you don't want to get. Uh, but simply it's good, it's best uh, in terms of rewards because like at least five here you would be happy to get, right? Uh, in terms of Conqueror Artifact Compendium, you are not having the newest one, the artifact, but you have one new one which is Wolf of the Wolf uh, Whole Horn and it depends on the season where you are, right? And what's the newest artifact for you. And here you have at least two or three which you will actually want to have, right? And of course a lot more bed. The Enduring Artifact is the worst one in terms of the reward section because you don't have the newest artifact here guided crossbow is not the newest but you will still want to have at least one or two here but much more you would not rather have right so like in terms of pure quality and pure value i think uh, artifact compendium is the best artifact 
you ain't for a free to play and low spenders like honestly that's the best one right if you want to try your luck in terms of artifacts and you feel like you are lacking some artifacts try this one that's how i'm getting most of my artifacts in general right i'm pretty sure in one whole carry k you will be able to save up 30k gems in order to get two guaranteed legendary ones right so in terms of heroes we already know that every single carry k we have a new heroes in the game right and of course, there is a couple of ways how you can get those heroes. Like some of them are from the Lucky Spins, some of them are from the Strongest Lord, and some of them are from the Wheel of Destiny. Uh, if you are a low spender, or if you are a free-to-play player, I would never recommend to try your luck in Strongest Lord. Don't waste your uh, speed-ups, don't waste your resources, because you will never be able to get the desired tokens, desired legendary heads, which you want to have, because this is the pay-to-win event. And almost every single time, pay to win players are going to be in top 10, right? Top 15 or even, even top 25. So every hero which comes out and it says that it's on, it's available through Strongest Lord, imagine that that hero is more rare, right? But there is another way how free to play players and, pay, and uh, uh, low spenders can get those rare heroes. That's Wheel of Destiny. Unfortunately, I can't show you Wheel of Destiny here because... Uh, Wheel of Destiny starts at the start of the new KVK. Uh, you will have to have at least 10k gems for a Wheel of Destiny, and you will be able to get the newest heroes. And right now we have update even on Wheel of Destiny. You will be able to choose four desired uh, legendary hero which you want manually, right? So if you want to get uh, heroes which are on the strongest lord, don't waste your resources. Wait for uh, Wheel of Destiny, and Wheel of Destiny will be uh, the choice for you, right? I think in general, Wheel of Destiny is the best uh, hero acquiring um, like event in in Call of Dragons. Especially, it's good because it's the start of the new KVK. It feels like everything fresh. You are excited. Uh, plus, you have a like capability of acquiring newest hero. And I think like soon in like six days, I will be able to have my Wheel of Destiny. And of course, I will try my luck. That's the event which you don't want to miss, right? If you are a free-to-play player, you will have a limited amount of tickets to spin the Wheel of Destiny. But if you are pay-to-win player, you will be able to get a lot of tickets, which means you will have more chance uh, to acquire like all of the heroes. Plus, there is a lot of amazing rewards in Wheel of Destiny, right? Um, which means that, like, in my opinion, Wheel of Destiny and Artifact Compendiums are the best free-to-play uh, events which you will actually want to spend some gems or some resources, right? So, uh, if you guys will have a question, what's the best free-to-play uh, events in terms of, uh, or low spender events in terms of value and where I, on, where I spend my gems, like, only event, that's like... Uh, Wheel of Destiny and Artifact Compendium, right? That's always been my answer. That's what I'm going to do even now. That's why I have saved this amount of gems. And yeah, if you will uh, listen to my advice, I think you will be happy. Of course, I understand you need to be lucky in terms of uh, like uh, even Artifact Compendium and the Wheel of Destiny to acquire the legendary uh, artifacts or legendary heroes. But for example, from my side, um, I have been spending gems on Artifact Compendium. I got Rattle Spear from there. I got Mirage Orb from there. I got two levels on Tier of Arbon from that Compendium. I got Spring of Silence. And I got uh, Soul Lance Blade, right? Other than that, all of my artifacts are mainly one level. But still, imagine if I could not, should not have the Rattle Spear and Mirage Orb if I never spin the... Uh, artifact compendium right in terms of wheel of destiny uh, well guys i got um, uh, from like free to play uh, spins of wheel of destiny uh, the syndrion which is great at that time it was amazing i got syndrion um i got goresh uh, from that spins right i got i got theodore so these are these are all rare heroes which are gettable from the strongest lord and if you are to play player and or uh, low spender i'm sure you are going to have a rough time acquiring them and plus i got tohar from the wheel of destiny so these two are my favorite free to play friendly events in call of dragons right also there is a one more which is lucky spins 
Uh, lucky spins, generally, well, we need to mention what the lucky spins, right? It's the same wheel, but you are choosing manually which hero you want to get. Sometimes we are having one hero lucky spins, but generally more we are having like archer lucky spins where you can choose like Kinara, Nico, and like archers, Fragar, Zaida, which these the tokens you want to get, right? If you will get lucky, you will have a full unlock, but of course, every single spin costs 700 gems. And what's my opinion about that, right? Like regarding lucky spins. Of course, it can be free to play friendly, but I would not really recommend to spin gems and spend gems on every single lucky spins. Of course, if you are close to awakening a lucky spin hero, which are like Zaida, which is Bertrand, uh, which is of course Nico, uh, sometimes it's Kinara, Emery's, Bakshi. These are the heroes, Kogul, right, one of the best Lucky Spins hero. These are the heroes which you can get the tokens uh, of, from the Lucky Spins. And I think if you are focusing, like if you already awakened your primary hero and most important hero, and the hero pair, like is for example Skogul, of course you will spend some spins and some gems on Lucky Spins on Skogul, right, if you have already Goresh ready. And also at the same time, well, um, if you have uh, Sindri on, on a great space, like on a good levels, and you have Lucky Spins on Fragar, of course you are going to spend on Fragar. That's the only times when I'm like I approve for myself to spin uh, gems, uh, to use gems on the Lucky Spins. But besides that, I wouldn't really recommend to spend the gems on every single Lucky Spin because it's costly. You won't gonna be able to uh, like get artifact compendium rewards because you won't gonna have enough gems, especially for to play players. Uh, you might won't gonna have enough gems for Wheel of Destiny, and honestly, I think. Those two are much better than Lucky Spins, right? The uh, events which I like strongly disagree to try your luck as a free-to-play player and as a uh, low spender is um, like this one, Forge of the Light, and second one is Witches of the Forest. Um, it's good that I have Forge of the Light in my server right now, which means I will explain why it is so bad, right? Of course, we have a selection here. Now you like this is good the newest event where we can actually select the artifact we want to get and generally mainly the newest ones are here so mainly like let's say we got the artifact we chose which artifact we want and uh, like there is like 0.6 percent luck that we are going to get our chosen artifact and the other ones has 0.9 so the information it says that we need, we need to have at least 90 spins in order for us to get a guaranteed legendary artifact so what it means, right? Sometimes you won't gonna get lucky. That's how you want. We have to calculate it. We need to like at least ten spins cost six thousand gems. So we need to spin this nine times. Like click this nine times. So imagine the artifact compendium. You need to have thirty k gems, and you are guaranteed two legendary artifacts. So you can see what kind of difference it is, right? Plus. You, you want to have only one here, which is Guided Crossbow, and all of this, I don't think that you will be happy if you go to, like, maybe Breath of the Gargantes, maybe, but other than that, I think you won't gonna be happy if you got anything rather than Guided Crossbow whenever you are spending gems on uh, the artifact of Forge of Light, right? But if you are spender, if you are, like, fully invested in game, and that's your gameplay, Forge of the Light is one of your primary artifact getter because you will you will be spending a lot of gems on this artifact plus if you are spender and you are going to spend a lot in this game i think forge of the light and riches of the forest is your favorite um, artifact uh, events with where you will be able to spend your gems or your saved saved up tickets so this is the difference between pay to win and free to play players for pay to win players this artifact uh, event is amazing because they can actually choose now which uh, which artifact they want to maybe upgrade to level 5 or maybe they want to get the newest one which is for me and for us shield of this stubbornness so guys there is a difference between if events and difference between events where free to play and low spenders can play and try their luck and a pay to win players should do that too right so this is what i wanted to share i hope it was understandable for you guys if you if you did not understand anything i'm always available on my discord channels which link is always on my description and as always, guys, if you like the video, press like, subscribe, share, 
it always gives me more and more motivation to make more videos for this game. Um, I wish everybody an amazing day, morning or night, wherever you are. We are going to see each other really, really soon. Bye-bye and luck.